Welcome to Space Oddities and this edition of An Astronomical Life. Today we're looking at the life of Maria Mitchell, a pioneering American astronomer and the first professional female astronomer in America. Maria was born on August the 1st, 1818 in Nantucket, Massachusetts. Her parents were William Mitchell, a teacher and amateur astronomer, and Lydia Coleman Mitchell, a librarian. Maria's father, William, as well as being a teacher, was a scientific experimenter and worked on chronometers, clocks that help ships keep track of their longitude. Maria was raised in a Quaker family that valued education and intellectual development. She was one of ten children which instilled a sense of community and cooperation. Additionally, Nantucket's importance as a whaling port meant that wives of sailors were left for months, sometimes years, to manage affairs at home while their husbands were at sea, thus fostering an atmosphere of relative independence and equality for the women of the island. This sense of independence and equality would remain with Maria throughout her life. William Mitchell educated all of his children about nature and astronomy, and her mother's employment at two libraries gave them access to a variety of knowledge. Maria reportedly showed an early interest and talent in astronomy and mathematics. She would stargaze from the rooftops of their home or climb trees where there was a clear sky and was fascinated by them. Maria also enjoyed the quiet solitude of the roof. William, her father, taught her how to operate a number of astronomical instruments, including chronometers, sextants, refracting telescopes and Dolland telescopes. Maria also often assisted her father in his work with local seamen and in his observations of the night sky. Early education. After attending Elizabeth Gardner Small School as a young child, Mitchell enrolled in the North Grammar School where her father was the first principal. When Maria Mitchell was 11 years old, her father founded his own school on Howard Street. There she was a student and also a teaching assistant to her father. In 1831, at the age of 12, Mitchell aided her father in calculating the exact moment of a solar eclipse. When the school founded by her father closed, she then attended Cyrus Pierce's School for Young Ladies. She later worked as a teaching assistant for Cyrus Pierce himself. Mitchell developed experimental teaching methods, which she later employed during her professorship at Vassar College. A year after her own school was opened in 1835. Maria allowed non-white children to attend her school, though the local public school was still racially segregated. In 1836, age 17, Mitchell began working as the first librarian of the Nantucket Athenaeum, a position she held for 20 years. Maria also used this role to continue her self-education, particularly in astronomy and mathematics. The institution's limited operating hours enabled Mitchell to assist her father with a series of astronomical observations and geographical calculations for the United States Coast Survey and to continue her own education. Early Astronomical Work Maria assisted her father in conducting observations including calculating the positions of the planets and the timing of solar eclipses. She also gained a reputation in the local scientific community for her meticulous and accurate observations. On October 1st, 1847, Maria discovered a comet using a two-inch telescope. Initially reported as Miss Mitchell's comet, formerly known as C-1847T1, this discovery earned her international recognition and acclaim. 
On October the 6th, 1848, Mitchell was awarded a gold medal prize for her discovery by King Christian VIII of Denmark. This award had been previously established by King Frederick VI of Denmark to honour the first discoverer of each new telescopic comet, a comet too faint to be seen with the naked eye. The only previous women to discover a comet were the astronomers Caroline Herschel and Maria Margareta Kirch. Mitchell's medal was inscribed with line 257 of Book 1 of Virgil's Georigates. Non frustra signorum obitus speculumar et autors. Not in vain do we watch the setting and the rising of the stars. Mitchell became a celebrity following her discovery of the comet, with hundreds of newspaper articles written about her in the subsequent decade. At her home in Nantucket, she entertained a number of prominent academics, such as Ralph Waldo Emerson. He was an American essayist, lecturer, philosopher, abolitionist, and poet who led the transcendentalist movement in the mid 19th century. Herman Melville, who was an American novelist, short story writer, and poet of the American Renaissance period. Among his best known works is Moby Dick in 1851. Frederick Douglass, after escaping from slavery in Maryland in 1838, Douglas became an American social reformer, abolitionist, orator, writer and statesman. He became the most important leader of the movement for African American civil rights in the 19th century. Sojourner Truth, born Isabella Bumfrey. She was an American abolitionist and activist for Afro-American civil rights, women's rights and alcohol temperance. Truth was born into slavery in Swartkill, New York, but escaped with her infant daughter to freedom in 1826. After going to court to recover her son in 1828, she became the first black woman to win such a case against a white man. In 1849, Mitchell accepted a computing and field research position for the U.S. Coast Survey, undertaken at the U.S. Nautical Almanac Office. Her work consisted of tracking the movements of the planets, particularly Venus, and compiling tables of their positions to assist sailors in navigation. In 1857, Mitchell travelled to Europe. While abroad, Mitchell toured the observatories of contemporary European astronomers, like Sir John and Caroline Herschel, and Mary Somerville. When Mary returned from Europe in 1865, she was appointed as a professor of astronomy at Vassar Female College by its founder, Matthew Vassar. She advocated for women's education and the inclusion of women in the sciences mentored and inspired many young women who went on to have their own careers in astronomy and other scientific fields. Though Mitchell did not have a college education, she was appointed Professor of Astronomy at Vassar College by its founder Matthew Vassar in 1865 and became the first female Professor of Astronomy. Mitchell was the first person appointed to the faculty and was also named director of the Vassar College Observatory, a position she held for more than two decades. But then again, it was built at her bequest. Thanks, in part to Mitchell's guidance, Vassar College enrolled more students in mathematics and astronomy than Harvard University from 1865 to 1888. In 1869, Mitchell became one of the first women elected to the American Philosophical Society, alongside Mary Somerville and Elizabeth Cabot Agassiz. 
Maria employed many unconventional teaching methods in her classes. She reported neither grades nor absences, advocated for small classes and individualized attention, and incorporated technology and mathematics in her lessons. This image shows Maria Mitchell observing the sun along with her students. Here can be seen Maria on one of several field trips across the USA to observe solar eclipses. Her efforts contributed to the success of Vasso's science and astronomy graduates, as 25 of her students would go on to be featured in Who's Who in America. Though her students' career options were limited by their gender, she emphasised the importance of their study of astronomy. She said, I cannot expect to make astronomers, she said to her students, but I do expect that you will invigorate your minds by the effort at healthy modes of thinking. When we are chafed and fretted by small cares, a look at the stars will show us the littleness of our own interests. Research and Observations Maria conducted extensive research on sunspots, focusing on their periodicity and changes over time. She published findings on solar eclipses, double stars and nebulae. She photographed planets such as Jupiter and Saturn as well as their moons and continued her observational work often involving her students in research projects. One quote associated with Maria Mitchell says, We especially need imagination in science. It is not all mathematics nor all logic, but it is somewhat beauty and poetry. Mitchell pioneered in the daily photography of sunspots. She was the first to find that they were whirling vertical cavities rather than clouds, as had been earlier believed. She also studied comets, nebulae, double stars, solar eclipses, and the satellites of Saturn and Jupiter. She was elected to the American Philosophical Society in 1869. She helped found the Association for the Advancement of Women, in 1873 and served as its president from 1875 to 76. Her involvement in the AAW reflected Mitchell's support of women's rights including suffrage. She retired from Vassa in failing health in 1888 and died the next year. Maria Mitchell's life and work stand as a testament to her pioneering spirit and dedication to science and education. From her early fascination with the stars to her groundbreaking achievements in astronomy and her passionate advocacy for women's rights, Mitchell left an indelible mark on history. Her legacy continues to inspire and empower future generations of scientists, particularly women, to pursue their passions and contribute meaningfully to their fields. In celebration of their own daughter, Nantucket built an observatory and they've named it the Maria Mitchell Observatory in her honour. The astronomical community have also celebrated Maria Mitchell's achievements by naming a crater on the moon after her. Thank you again for watching this Space Oddities special of Astronomical Lives. And don't forget to watch Space Oddities Live every Tuesday at, on 8pm British Standard Time and 3pm Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. We hope to see you there. Bye for now.